Hello, here we are using MaximDL Pro 6.13, one of their later versions, in order to perform photometry on a moving object. Obviously you need MaximDL open, make sure it's open, go to the Analyze menu and select Photometry. You'll notice that there are no open files in this case. MaximDL does something that's really nice and saves memory by allowing you to perform photometry on a group of files that are resting on your hard drive in the background and not consuming your active RAM or your memory of your computer. Click Add Files. I happen to have a whole slew of files here of Asteroid 957 Camellia. I'm going to select all of them and say Open. MaximDL does a great job. If you have the Object and Filter checkboxes set here, it will group each one off, allowing you to perform photometry on individual uh, actual asteroids, but also by their photometric color filters as well, which is very nice. We're going to ignore the Quality tab for now, but this would allow you to set thresholds for full width, half maximum, roundness, intensity, and contrast. Make sure that you can actually perform photometry properly on these objects. In the Match tab, we're going to make sure that we have automatic star matching happening here, rather than anything manual. And this allows the software to align all of the images individually. This is also a good place because you can click on individual files or scroll through using the Next Image button and find your asteroid, which is what you're studying. And in this case, Asteroid Camellia is right here, very close to the center of the image. In the Identify tab, we need to tell MaximDL which object is actually an asteroid. So we select here, New Moving Object, and we click on Camellia, and it labels it Moving 1. Click down to the very bottom image here in our list. Camellia has moved considerably. We're going to click on it down here, and it labels it again Moving 1. At this point, MaximDL should have labeled each image appropriately um, so that your target has been labeled and encircled by an aperture. We also need a reference star. I'm just going to choose a random star here. Normally you would use a catalog star with appropriate magnitudes. It labels it automatically ref1, but you can label it anything you wish. And normally you would enter a correct magnitude there, not just something random like 10, which is what I have done. It also is a good idea, since we're good scientists, to use a check star to validate that our comparison star is not in and of itself a variable or anything unusual is happening with the rest of the image. And at this point, MaximDL has gone through and applied those labels and apertures to all of the objects in each of the image frames. It's pretty cool in that it knows how to identify moving objects. At this point you can hit graph and it reads all the files and does photometry on each one for you automatically and presents you with a plot. You can then save that off as a comma separated value. Down here at the bottom there's this rather hidden little triangular thing which pops up a drop down menu. You can save as a comma separated value file that's easily openable in Excel, or you can save it off as a standardized AAVSO text file, which is more for variable stars, certainly not asteroids, or you can just print the plot, which is fine as well. That's all there is to it. Thank you for watching.